Okay, we are ready to set off on our next adventure. Just parked here in the tunnel fire trail car park off Woi Woi Road. There's a few cars in this car park. Geez, we've done some adventures down here. And this next explore down here will involve trying to find the giant Woi Woi snake. So I was reading up a little bit about this a number of months ago and I put it on the back burner as I've been trying to find an Aboriginal site down here. So four weeks ago I was here seven hours in the bush and I came away with nothing. I'd never been so disappointed before. As you can imagine I came here early hoping to finish off that video and I came away with nothing. I went down and had some dinner in Woi Woi and on the way home I had nothing to show for it. That's why you saw no videos uploaded on that weekend. So I've had to put that on the back burner and get these explores. I know I can film done and when I have some confirmation of that other one I'll start it again. Another thing is one of my earliest memories of watching American based TV shows was SWAT from 1975 with Steve Forrester and I just started watching that again the other day. I had not seen any reruns since I was a young boy in the 70s and funnily enough I was watching that first episode and I thought wow this is full on. I can't believe the subject matter that they're portraying in this first episode. And then I thought I'd get onto Wikipedia and find out why this show only lasted for two years. And that's exactly why. It was portraying so much violence and provoking so much violence that the producers pulled it. It was a wildly popular show with that theme song, if you remember. So that was a SWAT theme show, uh, theme song from the mid 70s. And I can't believe they pulled it. There was a lot of violence in the 70s, if you remember. The Vietnam War was going on and a few other things. But I've been really getting into it. I've watched the first two episodes and I think all up it lasted for two seasons and 37 episodes. So in the memory of Steve Forrester, who's long since passed away, his character in SWAT was Lieutenant Dan Hondo Haraldson. And he would always have his catchphrases on that show. And his main one was, let's roll. So that's what we're gonna do now. The next time we turn on, we'll be at the intersection where the tunnel fire trail meets the infinity pool on the left and the quarries on the right. And from there, we are gonna head straight a track that I've never done before. So this will be the very first time that we head down to Dylan's farm. And I just state for the record, what a stunning day today is. It must be about 16, 17 degrees, light breeze, but the sun is out and it doesn't take very long to warm up. So here we are at the famous intersection down this way, as I've mentioned many times before, to the infinity pool and the World War II explosives chamber at top of the Woi Woi Tunnel. Down this way we've got the Mullet Creek quarries and the Mullet Creek culvert tunnel. And down this way apparently is the giant Woi Woi snake. So I've never been down here before. This will be my very first time. So we're going to have to look out for the Mount Wanderbine Trig fire trail. We need to pass that. And then we need to come to a sign that says Dillon's Trail. A lot of people get confused with the Dillon fire trail. But we need to find the sign that says Dillon's Trail on the Great North Walk. So let's head down here for the very first time. 
and see if we can find the Roy Roy snake. We've got summer here in Australia in about four or five months time. So if you plan on doing this then instead of winter, be mindful that the sun's going to be on you all the way from the Dillon's farm sign there at the intersection. But once you get to this little bend here, and then you get a hell of a lot of shade cover. So even today, which is only 16 degrees, I'm uh, sweating a little bit. I'm walking at a reasonable pace, but through here it's very leafy. So I'm going to enjoy this next part of the walk. I left the Tunnel Fire Trail car park at approximately 5 past 12 and I reached the intersection at about 12.30. So that's how long it takes you from there to there, about half an hour. Uh, like I said, I walk a little bit quicker than most people, so half an hour to 40 minutes. That's what you can expect. We've got a gate up here. I don't think there was any mention of a gate, but I did read where it says that it ascends, which means it starts going up. But our goal is to find that sign. Dylan's Trail. I think I'm actually, I might have actually come this way. Yeah, this looks familiar. When I was looking for that waterfall back two years ago, I forget what its name now is, um, just across from Staples Lookout there. And I got lost that day, and I'm pretty sure this looks very familiar. I came all this way, all the way to the end, and then back again. This looks real familiar. There was water running that day, I think. Yeah, that was a monumental effort that day, trying to find that waterfall. What's it called? I forget what it's called. I've got a video on it. Look in 2022. Go to Playlists 2022. And the first little bit of it says Staples, and then there's a waterfall after it. It was booming that day because there was heavy rainfall that week. Some people have said they've never seen it that powerful, that particular waterfall. So. Coming up to a sign here. Give us a bit of a clue where we are. So I may have come on this trail before, not knowing, back in 2022. Tunnel Fire Trail, Woi Woi, Rocky Ponds, Tonga. Girakul, Mount Wanderbine. Maybe I came down this trail back then. I think it was Nellie's Glen. Does that ring a bell? Nellie's Glen Waterfall? I'm not too sure. Uh, so that's part of the Great North Walk there. This would probably take me back to the fire trail to go back home. I don't know if that's shorter or that's shorter there. But I still don't see any sign that says Dylan's Trail. Let's go further up. About 10 minutes on from that Girakul sign. We've got another one here. Could this be the Mount Wanderbine Trig or was that back there? Rocky Ponds Trail. So this is completely different. I don't know where that leads. Girakul of Matonga. Alright, it does mention that once you complete, so we're still on the Great North Walk, once you complete the Woi Woi Snake, you can walk all the way from Mount Wanderbine to Batonga or something like that, that's it. So you can do a one way trip if you want this way. But the article that I read said that their car was parked in the same car park mine is in, so they had to come back the same way, which I will have to do. So if you could carpool, leave one car down on this end and either start it from there and end up where you leave the other car up in the tunnel fire trail car park, you could do it that way or you could just do what I'm doing at the moment, a return trip.
the Rocky Ponds Trail is off to the left just up there and down here we've got another sign so not too far from there this could be the one let's see I know we have to head left I think tunnel trail well that's confusing okay so we're on the tunnel trail right but there's no sign on here or maybe there's a sign up here let's have a look remember we have to find the Dillon's trail sign and there you go okay so that's a shortcut so straight through there I gather if you keep on following that along it'll bring you down here somewhere is it yeah okay this is definitely where I came when I got lost I made it to here and then I turned around when I was looking for those waterfalls back in 2022 and I was heading back to the car and I met those two fabulous girls and they said oh we're heading down there as well and it was very close to where the car was parked so this is what you need to look for fellas all these this video I'm taking of um, these signs is to make it easier for you guys so note down all the signs that I've already filmed this is the one you need to follow Dylan's trail be mindful when you come back out of here look for the steps across here and cut straight through and head back that way so it's quite narrow up through here if you notice the next little bit of information that I've got says we'll be going up and down a little bit and then we'll come to a huge rock platform and in the distance we'll be able to see signs of the woi woi snake further along so that's what, can, what we're going to be looking for we should also get some panoramic views of Brisbane waters from what I read at some point but in through here you can't really see much you're covered by bush everywhere so if you were cold if it was in the morning it'd be great to walk through here because you'd be sheltered from the wind in the cold you can see what they mean and it starts going up so let's get to that huge rock shelf and see who's first to spot the snake in the distance you'll start to climb up a bit of a steep section here and there was something up here I'm not going to say it was a trig station it's pretty well covered here but there was some sort of thing embedded into the ground you can see the bit of Rio sticking out and just up here I can see another great north walk sign just in case for those of you who think you might be lost of a nice outlook now let's see if we see any view of something is this the big rock shelf they speak of got some steps cut in here There's something in the distance there okay there's a little bit of Brisbane waters over there nothing spectacular there's a whole bunch of lights what looks to be lights over there I don't know what that is and they're doing some road there maybe on a private property not quite sure what's that in the distance there get a few pictures here so I can determine what it is when I get home I'm coming across plenty of rock platforms here and my heart's fluttering a little bit because I'm looking out for this giant snake it's meant to be in between 50 and 60 meters in length it's quite long made up of rocks they say 
it was some sort of Aboriginal artifact at one point and somewhere along the line people have moved the rocks and made it into a giant snake I'd say in the early 1900s or something the young folk up here would have been pretty bored and I can only imagine what their days would have consisted of no video games or going down the shopping mall the talk would have been let's head to the rock platform and rearrange the rocks and that's been left that way apparently you can see it from up high as well from a fair distance away that's still nothing so we've come just on top of the mountain up here and it starts to descend down rather rapidly could be a little bit dangerous down here if you don't have secure footwear although there is steps cut steps into the rock oh it's nice and cool down here beautiful right. maybe I should have looked to see I've got a couple of shoe prints here coming up two different ones, one overlapping the other whether or not that's today I'm not too sure but they're both going up where's the ones coming down? nothing yeah maybe I should have looked to see how long this walk is kilometres and time wise we'll get a gauge once we get there because we know that we can do seven kilometers in just over an hour, an hour and 15. And I left the car park at midday. So if we get there around about ooh, quarter past one, anywhere in between one and one thirty, there's another couple of shoe prints. One and one thirty, that would tell me because I've been pretty much walking at the same pace that would be around about 7 k's, 7 or 8 k's still nothing where is this rock platform where I can spot the snake mountains everywhere these signs make it very easy but there's really nowhere else that you can go you know, it's just the bush is blocked off on all sides. The path is pretty much obvious for people. It just goes from rock to dirt. Reminds me a little bit of um, going down to Gossang's tunnel there. When we did that with Jules earlier this year. This track reminds me a lot of that one. just want to mention as you're coming up this trail here if you're chatting with someone it's very easy to miss this last arrow here which is right down here sort of like got some shade on it I, I nearly missed it so I started heading up here and started going this way before I just turned around and caught it so be mindful when you come up this last little bit you've got to head up through here and you'll see another sign here the cut step into the rock so here's another sign here notifying you on the way back and this one tells you where to go from here I didn't see anything more in the distance but you do have arrows on the ground so if you can't see any of these, keep a look out for stuff like this. This one right here. Now has anyone seen that classic Australian movie, Running on Empty? When they're playing Spotto? Well let me tell you, I spot 
a snake pliskin in the distance. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a whole rock arrangement up there, which leads me to believe that we have reached the giant snake. I'm going to take a picture from here. I'm going to take a few pictures back that way. And I'll just check to see what time it is because we're pretty much here now we have reached this at 1.20 so it's taken us nearly an hour and a half so I would say this is about a 7k walk 6, 7, 8 kilometer walk that tells you to go up this way now, this is in the middle of nowhere and there's the giant snake This must be the walk to Fatonga. I'm going to go a little bit further. Hopefully it's not too far because there is a section where you can cross a creek and there is some Aboriginal engravings that have been defaced underneath a cliff over here. I'm going to see if I can find them considering we've come all this way. We head off to there. We've got to go down here. So if people could miss it, People didn't know anything about the giant snake Pliskin. They could actually miss it. They're just following the arrows. And they're not aware to come down here on this huge rock platform and get a glimpse of it. I'm going to search some Google images to see if anyone's captured this from drone, I might include them in my picture slideshow album. I don't think they'd mind if I took a few took a few uh, pictures of theirs. Do you think? All right. Where's the head? So there is meant to be, I guess, up there, right in the distance, I think that's still part of some Aboriginal monument from back in the day. But these rocks have been put here, I gather, by a white man. So this would probably, oh, is that the head up there? Anyway, you look after my boomerangs, this is the head. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Someone needs to fill in that gap. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Should we count all those small ones? All right. Eight. 9, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. I hope I've counted right because I've been known to forget. 61, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. Alright, let's just take an estimate for this one. Please. And, uh, 
150 rocks that makes up in between a 50 or 60 meter snake let me just get the note out here and I'll read out what it says the snake consists of hundreds of rocks arranged in sinuous form with a length in between 50 or 60 metres, first recorded in 1976. The Woi Woi snake plisket may have originally formed part of an Aboriginal stone arrangement, with earlier photos showing piles of stone strewn across, strewn across the platform. It's likely that someone in the last 20 years arranged the stones into the current snake form. Visible from the rock platform is Dylan's farm and the name of Lindsay Dylan is etched into the rock. The track descends from here past Woi Woi Tip and crosses Patonga Creek while the entire walk so far has been dry along the creek temperature drops by a few degrees and the vegetation is dominated by palms. Alright, so there must be signs of a farm here somewhere. Maybe that's what we were looking at before. And his name's etched into the rock. Where? It's like trying to find a needle in the haystack. Maybe this is the head here, yeah? Yeah, I'll say this is the head. Sinuous form. There's your word of the day. Sinuous. Didn't Cooper Cronk use that word describing of his body in a match of rugby league years ago when he was playing for the Roosters? I think. Let me see, have a scout around here, see if I can find the name. There's a few more things up there as well. We'll head up there and have a look. James Dillon's, whatever his name is. So this is an entirely different rock shelf here. The snake is up over there and I haven't been able to see anything. I did read there was some Aboriginal engravings here as well, <clears throat> but I can't see them. The rock is so weathered you can't really pick up anything. As for the farm, there's something in the distance there but trying to find a name etched into the rock, I don't know, I'd, I'd say it'd be over here on the edge. Oh, here we go. How's that? Lindsay Dillon. Right here. Maybe it was Lindsay. 20 years. I don't believe that... Um, I don't believe it was tw in the last 20 years that those rocks have been rearranged like that. Surely someone would have made a stink about it. People would have come up here before and seen those rocks formed in a different way that were part of Aboriginal heritage and if someone moved them, surely it would have made the news. I wonder how old this dude is. He's probably passed away now, but when did he etch this? That was lucky. Okay, so what you need to do, the snake is up there. Come across to the other rock shelf. You'll see the farm on your right hand side over there. Along the left hand side here, it's very easy to miss. You'll see the name, I think it says Lindsay Dillon. L I N D S A Y. Lindsay Dillon. Just go get a better view of the farm here, maybe through these trees. Maybe that's why he's put it there. Because pretty much from here to here is his farm. The Dillon Farm. That's it, we'll film a little bit more up around that snake and then we'll head down to the creek crossing and see if we can find those defaced etchings.
Thanks, Lindsay. Well, that's a wrap from up here at the Woi Woi Snake. I'm not quite sure on what angle takes the best pictures. I would suggest come up to the head here and shoot down this way. You'll manage to get it all in. I did go on a rock further down there shooting back this way. I won't know until I get home and have a look, but I took plenty of pictures. So take plenty of, if you decide to come here, take plenty of pics because half of them might not turn out. But on this end here, I'm pretty sure you'll get its sinuous form. It's a long way to come though, just to see a few rocks in the shape of snake pliskin. So be mindful you'll be walking for an hour and a half. If you like bushwalking, fair enough. If you're gonna come here just to see this, I don't think it'll be worth your while. There's no real historic value to it. And it's just a very large, open, weathered rock. The Aboriginal engravings up there at Mooney Mooney, which are just off the old Sydney Old Pacific Highway, sorry, just down from the old Sydney town. For me, in my opinion, are far better than what you see up here. But I'm glad I recorded it. I can say I've been here. So if, there's some, if it's something that you want to tick off the list, by all means, come up here. But I don't think it's really going to bring the crowds back. To put it up. So let's go down to the creek and then make our way back because time's getting on a little bit. I do have my flashlight so I'll be able to get out even if it gets dark. But I really do want to drop down into Woi Woi in the deep water plaza there and grab myself some Chinese. I think tonight with the amount of walking that I've done I might go for the four sides and some rice. Some Mongolian beef, honey chicken, sweet and sour pork. Possibly some beef and black bean, I'm not too sure. Let's see what's on offer. A lot of them, a lot of the times it runs out. So. Start to descend down now. My ankles are killing me. And I've got a long walk home. I've got a little overhang here. Again, if you're looking to take shelter, perfect little spot. I can hear the tip down here, the truck's going in and out. It does mention before we cross Patonga Creek that we will be passing the tip. So I'm hoping the creek is not too far away because I'm still on the journey for today and I'm thinking that I need to turn around as soon as possible. So I don't know if my feet will hold up. So this is the tip, eh? Wow! Might have a bit of a rest up here, huh? So this is what I could see. Alright. And I could see that loader down there, the ex excavator. I thought it was someone's property. This is the tip. Here's the guys coming down in. I gather this is Woi Woi Tip, yeah? Because there were reports back when I did the World War II explosives chamber back in the 90s, there was a gentleman living in there and a lot of the items that he had were brought in from the tip. So I'm thinking down in that gully down there, must be the railway line, where the explosives chamber is. If he was frequenting the tip and picking items up from here, then it must be pretty close to the railway line. What a huge facility. See all the mattresses down here.
Come on Patonga Creek, I hope you're not too far away. Do you know what this means? I'm heading straight down now. It means I'm possibly getting close to the creek, but it also means I'm going to have to come straight back up here. And it's not so easy getting down. There's not really many stairs there. It's rather slippery there. Ooh, the afternoon sun's on. I've got a funny feeling nothing's going to be open when I get back down into Woi Woi, as in the Chinese place I want to get my dinner from. So it looks like it might be pizza. I don't think I can make it back in time. It must be pushing on three o'clock. If it's going to take me two hours to get home, back to the car, I guess. Come on, Creek, I can't hear anything yet. Where are you? I want to get this last little bit. I hate pulling out of things. When I set my mind on something at the start of the day, I said that I'm going to film the little etchings, engravings down here on the cliff overhang. And I hate saying no. So I'll put up with the pain just to get it on film. And then when I'm in bed tonight, aching with soreness, I'll have a smile saying, I did it. Ooh. Here is this beautiful, cool vegetation they were talking about. The palm leaf vegetation. They did say you'll pass the tip and then go through this little section before you get to the creek. I'm not looking forward to going back up there again. Wow, the temperature dropped down here. I gather this is Patonga Creek and I now have to find the cliff overhang. They said it's near the creek. Let me just wet my feet. Get the cold on my ankles. Oh god that feels incredible. Oh it is cold too. Feels like an ice bath. Do I head up the creek? I have to read my notes. So just up from the creek, we've come to a few signs here. Great North Walk, Girakul. I wish it had how many kilometres I've done. And this one it says, "Do not enter. No access to Woi Woi." large earth moving equipment and excavations. I go that's to the tip. Now I've got to find a large cliff overhang. There's a whole bunch of rocks there. Notice how they don't say in the post that it's just up from the sign or anything. They say near the creek. This gives you an example why I can't find the Aboriginal long shelter I've been looking for for a long period of time around the Muller Creek area. No one's willing to give up its secret because of what's happened I gather to this one being defaced. So I'm going to head through the bush here, hopefully it's this one, I don't want to walk too much further. If it's not here, then I don't know how much further I'm going to head up there. I can hear, see a, a, a huge hang, overhang there so I'll go through the bush here. If it's here, great, if not, we'll see what happens. It's either I go up there a little bit or I turn around and go home. So there is a goat track coming through just off the main trail up there. It's a pretty impressive cave. I'm wondering if it's up in there. So people have certainly come up here where these engravings are. And now you can see the vegetation here has been trampled on. I think they said it's a kangaroo that's been defaced. Wow, this 
this would have definitely been an Aboriginal shelter back in the day. Large overhang. And this is a large overhang. some graffiti there. Oh yeah, okay, there you go. There you go. But I don't think that kangaroo is done by Aboriginals. That's too, too fine artwork. Hang on now, I'll get my torch out and show you just how well made. Okay, you've got some handprints, that's what they're talking about. There's some handprints there. Probably made in ochre where they uh, chew up the natural minerals with their with their mouth and with a little bit of water and put their hand over and spit it on. I'll get my uh, X80 out and uh, put the torch on. Okay, there you go. It does say, I've just reread it, and says the kangaroo that's drawn in charcoal, which is much later. That's, I don't think that's Aboriginal. You look at that, the head on that. That's, uh, that's too fine of a work. Whoever, do, whoever drew that kangaroo put their initials up there. It's the same thing. It's the same. Whatever was used to, to draw that is those people there. But the handprints, definitely. The handprints that are just there, that's been defaced. So that kangaroo should never have been put there. Whoever drew that could have put that anywhere else bar over the handprints. But if you ask me, whoever is those initials there have done that kangaroo there. There's another handprint there. There could have been more here as well, but they just faded with time. There's another one there. Idiots. Absolute idiots. Well, that's it. We conquered it, huh? I'll get a few pictures of here. And then I'm not turning on the camera unless I find a deceased body or it's worth filming until I get back to the car. I'm going to see what time I leave from here. And I'll let you know once I get back to the car how long it's taken me to get home with a steady walk. Those of you who have done this walk before, let me give you some time stats on this journey home from Patonga Creek. So I crossed over Patonga Creek at 2.28. I made it back up to the Woi Woi Snake by 2.42. I got back to the Dillon's Trail sign, very close to the Tunnel Fire Trail, at exactly 3 o'clock. I made it to the intersection where the Infinity Pool is one way and Muller Creek is on the left at 3.18. And I'm just entering the car park now and it is exactly 20 to 4, 3.40. So thanks for joining me. It was one hell of a day out until I see you again on the next adventure or explore. Adios.